Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening for some of the people that are out there. Uh, very excited to have all of you here. As soon as the participants come, we're going to have a great time. All right, Manish? There's just three of us. I know. Awesome, awesome. We're gonna get rocking and rolling here. Thank you for dropping thumbs up in the chat. Appreciate you all coming in and hanging out with us for some essential elements uh, uh, for AI success. Really excited to be here. We're gonna walk through a bunch of different things today. We're gonna get it, you go and get some introductions and, and talk about who we are and, and what really is gonna be successful. So thanks for joining us today. We're gonna get going uh, right now and uh, start chatting about all this fun stuff. So with that, it feels uh, very apropos to lay out an agenda or what's gonna be happening during the webinar. Obviously we're gonna do introductions as always, that's one of the most important things so that you're aware of who you're talking to and why you're talking to them. Then we're gonna talk a little bit about myself and, and Manish and, and Peak Activity overall. Go through a quick AI overview because there's a lot going on when it comes to what artificial intelligence is, and you've probably heard the term at least once or twice over the last 10 minutes, if you were scrolling through Twitter or your newsfeed, uh, then we're gonna get into the essential elements of AI success and what that means from a ground level and how you can be successful, not only yourself, but your organization or C-suite executive team board. And then we'll do some Q and A, but as always, right? Any meeting that I say with myself, it's always a full contact meeting. So if you have a question, if you have a thought, feel free to throw it in the chat. We're going to be monitoring it the whole time. Um, and with that, it feels like a good time to introduce myself at least, right? So I'm Rob Petrosino. Uh, I'm the head of emerging tech and innovation here at Peak Activity. I've been with the company for quite a long time. I've been speaking and working on artificial intelligence for a little bit over uh, five years or so. So I always say, you know, I got to talk about artificial intelligence when it was referred to as machine learning um, and uh, when it was way back and thought of just as algorithmic changes and not all this creative and fancy stuff. We'll talk about that. Long history on the digital consulting side. But with that, I have to throw it over to my co-host here, Manish. How about you introduce yourself? Thank you, Rob. Hello, everyone. Manish Shurapar. I am the CEO here at Peak Activity and really excited to have you join us. Uh, and uh, background of myself, I'm a technologist by trade. I grew up with a PC back before PCs were even cool. Let's, let's you know, date myself a little bit here. Um, and you know, uh, really have a passion for understanding how to use technology for business benefit, right? Not just a, it's great to talk about machine learning, it's great to talk about AI and data science, but a lot of you are probably wondering, how can I use this in my day-to-day -day life? And that's what we've created here around the essential elements of AIs. It's a way to apply this uh, and not just listen to the noise on X, formerly known as Twitter, or LinkedIn, or whatever uh, other concept of news that you get today. All right, Rob, if you want to go ahead and move forward a little bit, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about peak activity, but not a whole lot. And really, I, I want to emphasize uh, continuous growth and, and making sure that you can leverage today's solutions, whether they be in AI, whether they're in e-commerce, whether they're in technology, to reach an outcome. Uh, it, it is very noisy out there. There's a lot of, of concepts. There's a lot of things that, that brands need to engage with in terms of technology, in, in terms of uh, e-commerce solutions, in terms of AI. And our job at Peak Activity is really to be the right partner to steer clear of hype and really steer the brands that we work with 
towards achieving a better outcome. And that is becoming more efficient, that is gaining revenue growth. So we like to say we're a partner for the long-term success, leveraging technology, leveraging e-commerce tools and leveraging AI, spatial computing, all of those things that any digitally uh, enabled business needs to be really good at. And we also believe the journey by yourself, no matter what size company you are, is always tougher than having friends all around you. So to each and every one of you, you guys are our friends now, and we all kind of are on this journey together. And we all know no one person knows everything. So we're really, really open-minded and close-minded around uh, learning every single day. All right, Rob, if you want to move forward, uh, we'll talk really about the adoption of AI, right? I think anyone who's uh, tried to make an AI video, for example, you you really see very, very quickly, do a Google search for how do I make an, an AI generated video? And you'll get a million links, you'll get 10 people who are rated in the top quadrant of you know, best, uh, best producing AI generated video platforms. And then you'll be like, well, this is way too much. And then you'll you'll choke on the complexity. So we know it's a complex process just in your day-to-day -day life to, to use tools to help yourself get better. And then if you think about a company, right, when you've got hundreds or thousands of people that you need to steer in a certain direction, um, it's really, really challenging when you either have no prior experience or even if you do have prior experience, there is a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff that you've got to really uh, kind of um, embrace uh, that you have to learn or you have to make a priority to say, we're going to be really good at one thing. It might be using generative AI to help your marketing. It might be using uh, AI to improve your operational processes. But we do firmly believe the companies, no different than companies that embraced mobile and mobile technology, mobile phones about 10 or so years ago, did so much better. We do believe companies that embrace AI, make it a priority, are going to uh, really, really succeed. And a lot of what we want to do today is show you it's a marathon, not a sprint. You don't have to have everything solved today, but we do have a blueprint that we hope you can, you can kind of adapt and make your own that lets you understand it's not just about making AI happen today, but it's about a process that will get you uh, to be successful. So. Uh, I'll I'll uh, I'll kick it back over to Rob. Go ahead if you would, Rob. Go to the next slide. Yeah, and absolutely. Tell us, tell us about AI a little bit more and the foundation of, of what, what the elements are. Yeah, for sure. So when we think about artificial intelligence, there's a lot of different things that can come to mind, right? Uh, artificial intelligence has been around for decades at this standpoint. Um, however, over the last 18 months, it's had a resurgent when it comes to impacting everyone's life on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, what we're seeing most popular right now is what you're going to see on the left-hand side of the screen. So we've seen Google Bard, now called Google Gemini, OpenAI, Meta, and more um, release different types of artificial intelligence that are revolving around this idea of generative AI, which is allowing uh, a machine learning algorithmic system to create much like a human creates, right? Uh, the output wise is specifically known about being creative, extracting knowledge, applying that. And we see a really good use case here with Adobe's generative fill. So on the generative fill end of things, you can quite literally now extend photos, recreate photos, take a photo of your car and highlight the tire and make it a flat tire in about 10 seconds and send it to your boss saying that you're going to be late for a meeting. And it's really generally easy. If you can type into uh, a text box, you can create a really amazing, beautiful piece of artwork that's image-based or video-based or even audio-based in the long run of things. However, this comes from a long history of what you see on the right side of the screen, which is more analytical AI. On the analytical AI side of things, what we're seeing is a lot of annotation, 
description, diagnostic, prediction, uh, and prescribing a potential outcome. This is where the idea of like algorithms really started from. A lot of if this, then that type of statements that's happening. So what we're seeing here is a Tesla that's driving around and annotating the number of cars, the number of stop signs, lights, vehicles that are on the road. All of this is all happening in near real time so that you can have a better texting experience when you drive to work, which is fantastic if you think about it in the long run, right? These types of technologies have been out for you know, decades, like I said, and they're only getting better and better. And you see every major player from Apple to Amazon that's helping out in this space or at least aligning to using this technology. So when we shift over and say, well, this is a lot of different types of tech. Well, what are the essential elements for me to adopt this? And realistically, it comes down to four different types of this technology, this process or kind of idea overall. When we think about it, you really need to have educated teams and empower your internal organizations to understand what this technology can do and how it could impact your organization. Once you have an educated team from top to bottom, right, your frontline workers as well as your C-suite should be hyper-educated about these types of things because of the massive impact they could have on the business. Once you're educated, you can start to create advocates, and those advocates would be AI champions that understand various parts of the organization are going to start seeking out ways that they can apply artificial intelligence in this case, because that's the technology we're talking to it, to the organization. Once you have that, it's great to go on this journey with AI champions who are hyper-educated, but realistically, you're going to need to seek external guidance. Everyone has a day job. Not everyone's day job is trend tracking artificial intelligence every single day like it is mine, but seeking that external guidance and industry experts, you will move faster and have much more long-term ROI on your projects because you can avoid some strategic mistakes that have been made in the past. And the last one is to launch and elevate. Test, learn, be iterative in the, the projects that you do take on. Make sure you implement them the right way and start going through them. And we're going to break down each one of these in a little bit more detail. But Manish, anything to add about these essential elements from your perspective? I think the one thing I would I'd really emphasize is the power of information is out there, right? If you're not working to educate your teams, they're educating themselves. If you're not working to identify advocates, they're going to figure out things on their own. So I think it's really, really important if you're a, a business leader to really try to tr use this process in whatever way you can that uh, sort of gives you a framework for defining things, right? Because if you think about the guide one as an example, everyone's got people they follow and like on LinkedIn. And uh, really what we, we recommend is find the voices that are making a difference, not just from a really being out there five to 10 years out and imagining what the future looks like of colonizing Mars with AI, but more importantly, who is doing what that is separating uh, the signal from the noise. And, and I think we're really, we're really passionate about saying you don't have to spend a ton of money you don't have to spend a ton of time, but you do want to think about it being very, very laser focused in, in what you're trying to achieve, right? So if you're going to launch something, launch something that you think, you know, others have, have done and done well and something that you think somebody in your company is going to advocate for and that you've educated yourself on. So working backwards from a launch to say it's really, really essential to be surgical, to be precise uh, and not think wow, this has got to be this massive giant thing that you've got to do, right? It, especially with AI being everywhere. You can use it in your daily, li daily life very, very simply, but you've got to follow the framework. Otherwise, if you try to just skip straight to launch and you haven't educated yourself and you haven't identified an advocate for it, likely you're going you're gonna, to uh, not meet success. Uh, so the antithesis or the opposite of success is not a great place to be. And I think that's what we're trying to, we're trying to give you some education today about. Yeah, let's let's talk about education, right? Let's talk about educating teams. A really fantastic stat that we came across uh, late in the second half of last year was 42% of Gen Z workers are nervous to tell their managers that they're using AI at their job. 
And and what this is doing is causing a big riff in understanding how artificial intelligence is actually impacting organizations and impacting the day-to-day -day work. So making sure that everyone's on a level playing field when it comes to educated teams is really critical so that you can have open, clear, and honest communication about the impact of this type of technology. So by doing this, by really infusing education from top to bottom, uh, you really drive regular empowerment of workers to have conversations. Those workers, like I said, can be the C-suite all the way down to you know, middle management and, and those doing individual contribution to different projects. So educated teams levels the playing field for open and honest communication. When you have that, you can start looking at what this means for organizations as a whole. We see rifts in communication or variances in opinion when it comes to the adoption of AI, when some people are, like Manish mentioned before, reading maybe just the headlines or just focusing on things that are five and 10 years out and not looking at this at a regular interval. Education from your teams can come in a variety of different ways, linking up with people that are doing regular content posts, or regular webinars, creating content and pushing out in specific industries or verticals. It's a really good way to keep yourself educated, but that education has to happen within the organization as well. Taking those things in and dedicating time to those teams so they can understand it is really, really a vital way of making sure that the organization is stepping foot or moving forward in the right form and fashion. Manish, anything to add on, on the education side? Let's move over to, to creating advocates. So now that we have an organization that's that's ideating and understanding this technology and knows what it means from the standpoint of what this tech can do and what it is currently doing, you can start to create and identify advocates. Creating advocates is a different term than just identifying them. You may have people that are internal within the organization that are very, very pro artificial intelligence. You may have ones that are very, very naysaying or negative towards artificial intelligence. And they both rightfully have opinions um, which should be considered, but identifying AI champions comes from this initial portion of being educated. You can have people that swing back and forth in that pendulum from being an advocate uh, to being a naysayer, and that's okay because what's happening is they're understanding it more. So you start creating advocates because what you need is people that are going to act as change agents overall in the organization and start bubbling up ideas that may be really good ways of creating proof of concepts or creating a backlog where AI might be really impactful. So when we look at this overall from, from a global perspective, uh, dedicated teams related to generative AI as of last year have really swung in a couple different directions. So we saw about a 6% increase in just people saying yes overall that they have teams that are dedicated to generative AI. And we saw about a 27% swing to no. And the reason that we align to that 27% on the no side is because most people are now aware that they don't have internal teams that are working on this because it may have never been on their radar to begin with. Well, if it's not on your radar to begin with and you don't have people that are working on it, it's very hard to have advocates to start bubbling up ideas. And we saw that 27% really decline from don't know and maybe buckets within this graph and swinged over to the no and the yes side overall. So if you have teams that are working on it, you've already naturally aligned to some people that may be advocates for it, but they may be advocates in a very small silo. So looking at it a little bit more globally, it's something to keep in mind that there's a lot of teams internally that are aware of this technology. There's a lot of teams that may be starting to look at proof of concepts of this, but they may not be fully understanding of what's possible, and they may not feel comfortable being able to bring those ideas to light. So really focusing on creating an environment for AI champions to be vocal about what they can do and impact an organization. Yeah, and I, I think if I could add, Rob, to this, advocates are you know easy to find. There are a lot of hand raisers uh, and there's a lot of naysayers. Um, and I do really encourage all of our participants on this webinar to think about it as they're your lowest cost solution to carrying forward 
AI in your in your organization um, and in in your daily life, right? Because these are people who are enthusiasts. If you, if you go back to you know ten or fifteen years when when technology was a little more difficult than it is today, and you got an iPhone three and you couldn't figure out something, what did you do? You went and found your you know your nephew who was a tech kid and got them to configure your phone for you or to transfer your files or things like that. Or you went down to the to the AT&T or Verizon store and you got the, the associate there that was geeking out about uh, how to use a phone really effectively or how to use a watch really effectively. So I think you'll find that advocates are everywhere if you know to look for them. And I think that's the power of this framework is, is you know, we're not telling you anything that probably isn't really evident. However, it's really, really important that you you identify these advocates, so, so really be uh, intentional about saying, yes, I want an advocate or two or three or five in my company to bring it forward. Yeah, absolutely agree with you, Manish. That's a, it's a fantastic standpoint. Um, one of the things I will add on here, if you have questions or anything like that, feel free to throw it in the chat. We'll pick them up as we, we are, are able to. So, so feel free to throw them in there. We'll actually have a dedicated Q&A section uh, at the end as well, where we'll answer some questions. So. We've got an educated organization. We've got advocates. Now we need to seek a little bit of guidance, right? Leveraging industry experts allow you to move a lot faster, right? People that have been there, done that, are able to foresee you know, strategic roadblocks that can be avoided and enhance the overall adoption of different pieces of technology, including artificial intelligence. What's happening though is we're seeing about 75% of organizations considering or implementing a ban on, on chat GPT alone. This was from a BlackBerry study in August, 2023. And this came from a couple different ideas. This was, you know, some internal organization saying, well, we were very worried about proprietary data and some organizations being worried about feeding the algorithm of chat GPT with this proprietary information so that it could be leaked externally. And as others that were seeing in hearing news articles about different organizations using chat GPT or large language models and struggling with adoption or, or feeling like their information um, was available now to, to maybe people they didn't want it to be available for. And that really came from not understanding or not seeking guidance from teams that have been there and done it previously. So working through that is really, really critical. This number becomes drastically smaller when you start to seek guidance from those that have been through this process before and aligning to that process and aligning to having an osmosis barrier between your teams and your organizations and the market in general allows you to move much faster through the adoption process the ideation process, the, the the build process, the adoption process, all these barriers become much, much easier to step over by aligning to some of those external barriers. And, and you know, self-admittedly, Peak Activity has been in this space for quite some time. Uh, we've been working on everything from computer vision to algorithmic uh, alignments to large language and generative AI models uh, over the last you know couple years. So understanding that and aligning to that is, is really critical. And we have helped navigate organizations around from maybe adopting just the wrong off the shelf tool or going down the path of building something custom that they probably didn't need to. Um, that's really where the seeking of guidance and being able to be, for lack of a better term, a little bit vulnerable is really, really critical in the long run. Um, Manish, anything else to add on, on this side of this for, for guidance? I know it's, it's a favorite of yours. I would I would love to play on your osmosis reference, right? And anyone who's ever cooked a, a Thanksgiving meal, brined a, a a tofu or a turkey or your choice, you you brine so that the barrier between salt being on the outside of of the uh, the turkey, say, can get to the inside of the turkey, right? You want things to move back and forth, and you want information to move back and forth instead of an outright ban on ChatGPT. Right. It really makes sense to say, let me talk to my existing vendors, whether you're working with Microsoft and Office 365 or Google and, and, and their workspace product. There are ways that you can get access to guidance either for free or really for a, a low cost just by working with and talking to 
people you might be working with today, right? So don't think of AI as this big, scary, you know, dinosaur off on the on the horizon of the plane that you're looking out on, but instead see it as just another arrow in your quiver, right? It is just another tool that if you use Microsoft Office as an example, it's it's like Outlook, Excel, and AI tools that they're parallel and with each other, not this big scary thing that, that that is looming out there. I completely agree with you there. That's a, a hundred percent a great way of, of aligning to it. So our, our our element number four is is to launch and elevate, right? Testing, learning, iterating your way through the adoption of artificial intelligence is just a critical way of doing this, right? We call it crawl, walk, run a lot, right? Walk, crawling your way, understanding it, starting to walk with it, and then uh, running and sprinting to scale is is a vital way of doing things. Just a saying, hey, we're just going to do this thing, pulling it and give everyone access to it may not be the best way of doing anything. And Ryan made a big point uh, in the chat here saying like, one of the biggest roadblocks for adoption is, is understanding what AI can do and finding a small project that can show feedback and, and align to it. That is how you should be doing things. And that's this last element is finding a way to invest both time, effort, and energy into a specific project and, and aligning to an ROI that's meaningful and valuable when we think of a proof of concept. And when we dig into this, right, a lot of organizations are already investing in short term, midterm, and long term. AI investments, right? When we look at it overall, we're well over the 70 percentile that's saying, yes, we know within the next 18 months, we will or have already launched uh, a proof of concept or investing in artificial intelligence overall. And then when we contrast and look at what are the drivers for that, it's really, really interesting that most organizations are still aligning to customer experience which is fantastic. There is some navigational rocky waters when it comes to exposing artificial intelligence and specifically generative AI to the customer experience that you should be aware of. But there's a lot of other things that can be done internally, whether it's increasing speed to market when it comes to product ideation or reducing manual processes or touch points for internal teams. These are things that we talked about at the beginning of the call that are really, really great ways of driving adoption of AI because you're going to align to a couple different key performance indicators, whether that's the process optimization time for a specific task or a general customer satisfaction side of things for self-service maybe of a virtual agent or an AI uh, enabled chatbot or virtual agent and uh, allowing customers to interact with that. So when we think about these things, you really should be aligning to how can I launch a smaller proof of concept? How can I learn from that? And then how can I iterative be iteratively aligned to future phases of that? And you really should be looking at that from a strategic perspective. I'm going to crawl, I'm going to walk, and then I'm going to start running, and I'm going to learn in between each one of these phases. Um, these are great ways, and this is a great way to tackle any technology project overall, but it's really, really critical when it comes to AI. Um, Manish, anything to add on this? I, I know you've been doing this for far longer than I've been on this beautiful earth of ours, but uh, I wanted to give you some time to talk about it. Thanks for calling me old, Rob. So uh, anyone who watched the Super Bowl, there's an event here in America that we, we had called the Super Bowl, uh, also known as Taylor Swift's show. And the other the other day, or the other week, we had the Super Bowl here. And what was interesting is you saw Microsoft advertising co-pilot during the Super Bowl. And so what I want to really, the reason I share that is it's not just about building something anymore as it comes to AI, but it's about launching something. So you don't have to build from scratch. You don't need a team of engineers that are working through complex machine learning on an AWS SageMaker environment, what you really need is the ability to change within your company, change a business process using a tool that you may be able to just purchase. But the hard part of change is not purchasing a tool. It's, it's about implementing the tool. It's about, about putting the solution into place 
and saying, well, we bought uh, a, an Adobe image creation project, a product. So now we're going to change the way we create our images in the company. If you've been creating images the same for 20, 25 years, if you we always had a graphic designer who took a, a Jira ticket and, and made something and went through creative review or a creative brief was created, and now you're using AI to do it. It might just be changed one step of that process, but what often happens is people try to change the whole thing. We're going to get rid of the entire production team. We're going to get rid of the entire process, and we're just going to put AI in. And we bought this tool. And what happens is the people part of change doesn't occur. The advocacy of why we're changing something, the continuous improvement of saying, here's a tool that's going to make it easier, better, not a threat to your job. So when you think about launching and elevating something, it's really find a tool, find a solution, understand what AI can do for you, put something small in, just like Ryan said in the comments, but also consider the the fact that you're you're changing you're, you're changing inertia. You're fighting against something that that is a force to be reckoned with, which is the aversion to change, the, the aversion to making something different happened today than I did yesterday. So it's really, really, really important that you consider emotion, human feeling, uh, the aspect of saying uh, change is scary and I don't know if I want to do it as part of your journey. And I think that's as, as much of this process, which is finding those advocates, having people who are educated and, and really then being able to launch something uh, with the right guidance that is meaningful. Really, really impactful there. When we look at moving forward, we just hit four really strong, essential, realistically, elements for uh, adopting or, or implementing artificial intelligence and, and taking your journey. And, and we got a couple of different ways of supporting that for you on the call today. So the, the first one is we developed an AI readiness quiz. Uh, it really helps you allow your organization or team or uh company as a whole look at what ai preparedness looks for you and if you just click the link right above the chat right now that'll pop open that ai readiness quiz um and, and it'll give you a good profile give you a good output and understanding of, of what and where you're at in a couple of different portions of what we talked about today as well as some other uh areas of impact within the organization um and if you're interested in doing a one-to-one -one workshop you can plan your ai workshop alongside of us and we're happy to support those one-to-ones where myself and manish can, can come into the organization and support you overall and help you understand these elements a little bit deeper, understand the technology a little bit deeper and get to an actionable roadmap by just scanning that QR code there and filling out a couple key pieces of information. And we're happy to support that journey and move forward. With that though, we're gonna move over to Q and A. Uh, we set aside a couple minutes here to, to answer your question. So if you have a question, feel free to drop it in the chat. Um, let us know anything that you're thinking of related to the world of artificial intelligence, the world of artificial intelligence adoption, or questions you may have about some of these essential elements. We're happy to dig into them a little deeper. All right, as people type in their questions, Manish, I'll, I'll ask you one. What do you think is a blocker for executive teams when it comes to looking at artificial intelligence overall as a piece of technology, right? From this executive perspective, right? Either board or C-suite teams, what do you think are some of the blockers from, from understanding it? Here's where I would start. Everyone thinks it's gotta be big. Wow, AI is big. It's going to take a lot of investment. We got to put committees and people that are really dedicated to this, which if you can do that, you're going to be much more successful. It's not a bad thing to do. But getting 
uh, and really I'll play off of Rabia's question right here. How can you get more buy-in from executives? How can you get buy-in from boards? It's really funny. Boards are actually asking executives what they're doing about AI more than a executives are informing their boards about what they're doing Absolutely. with AI. Absolutely. And, and, and it's an interesting dynamic I haven't seen in uh, a long time or if ever, right? I, I, I grew up in the e-commerce industry and we'd always be advocating for e-commerce and boards would be like, no, we need to remodel our, our bathroom and, and things of that nature, right? As opposed to investing in e-commerce. Now boards are saying, what are you doing to be, to be ready? Uh, so I think having a really, really good plan and having had the conversations around AI, what you're thinking about doing on a uh, small basis and on a larger basis is really, really important. Yeah, I think that's a great one. We got a, a couple different questions about privacy and security and aligning to comfortability when it comes to artificial intelligence in that space. And I think that that's a very, very common one at, at this point is, is making sure that you're secure in the implementation, data is not going somewhere that it shouldn't, uh, and, and the like. And, and I'll, I'll take the first stab at this, and Manisha, I'll, I'll let you, you support it if you want. Artificial intelligence is a tool. It's that tool is neither good nor bad. It is acceptable in certain ways and it's not acceptable in other ways, right? If you're going to an open email and password, sign up only large language model, artificial intelligence and take in internal information and plop it into that system and asking questions about it. And this is not proprietary. It's not a paid version at a minimum. It's not running on your own infrastructure environment and it's not connected or vetted by your IT systems, it's probably not a great idea to be doing that because you could be exposing internal information into those systems. However, if you look at the inverse and look at adopting a, a large language model or an enterprise instance of a large language model, implementing within your own environment, setting really strong rules and standard operating procedures and governance related to how to use that internal model, whether it's ChatGPT or Claude or Microsoft Copilot, once you set those guidelines up, you reduce the overall level of security issues or naysayers or those that are worried about releasing information into the wild by taking over a couple really key and simple steps. So if you're going out there, or you have teams that are going out there and, and dropping things into external websites and, and asking questions against a, a PDF viewer, it's probably not a great idea. And you should at least start with a standard operating procedure or guidance or governance on how and when employees internally should be using artificial intelligence. But that as alone is a very good key critical step to start with. Right. Educate your teams on what you should or shouldn't be doing when it comes to open source or open models that are floating around the Internet. Um, we can talk about open source models and privatizing those models in a bit. But Manish, I want to give you a, a chance to, to tack on anything there. Yeah, I, I, I really like the concern around privacy and security. I would also counter. By saying you can remediate this by putting somebody from your cyber team or somebody from a managed service provider that you work with or your your tech security people in as advocates because the chances are they're going to be just as big of an advocate for using better tools than uh, anyone else however however if you look historically people always fear change the mobile phone came out well we can't let our employees use their own mobile phones at work Email came out. Well, we can't. These are not secure mechanisms of communication. We need to still put paper back and forth. Standing in the way of progress, standing in the way of innovation, you're never going to win. And the people who are, who are saying, we're just not going to use AI because it's insecure, are sadly mistaken. So getting past the privacy concerns are exactly what Rob laid out. Have a policy, have standards, have ways that you're engaging the people who are responsible for security and no is not an option, right? Yeah. No is an option to say, you know, we're going to file for bankruptcy at some point because the competition is doing what we can with half the amount of labor and twice the speed. So yeah. it's really, really important that you don't just stick your head in the sand, but you have a process around this. Yeah. 
Uh, absolutely. Uh, we got a good one. Uh, Kevin, this is a great question. With organizations who are currently going through layoffs or seeing layoffs uh, across the board, specifically within the tech space as of late, how do you foster the adoption by associates who may be skittish about losing their jobs? So great question. I will add uh, a, a really great stat to this. So MIT put together a study and looked at artificial intelligence impacting workers' roles. And they looked at a, a, a lot of individual contributors' roles and looked at generative AI or artificial intelligence at all impacting those, those workers' roles. Prior to this study, it was projected that 60, 70, 80 percent of a, of a worker's job could be completely automated by generative, generative artificial intelligence and the right system and works. This MIT study brought that all the way down to like 13 percent of a person's role on average can be impacted or taken over by artificial intelligence. So getting the narrative out now that this massive transformational technology isn't going to gobble up everyone's job is a is a really good starting point. And also looking at adoption by associates, you should really be looking at pain points of a current employees or associates day to day that can be optimized using artificial intelligence. That's naturally going to drive a curve up, right? Uh, a good example of this is also is is looking at the recent adoptions that have happened like Manish said in the Super Bowl, we saw five, six, seven different examples of AI impacting direct-to-consumers roles from Etsy all the way through Microsoft Copilot to Google. So understanding that this is a conversation that's not going to go away is critical. But when we think about the essential elements, it's that education portion. People are typically fearful of the unknown, right? I was afraid of the dark growing up because I didn't know what was lingering in the dark. Once I had a flashlight, though, it was a little bit more comfortable. I still scrambled up the stairs to get upstairs when I flipped the light switch off. But shining that light into the darkness is, is a critical aspect of getting adoption. Mish, anything to add there? Rob does a great job of carrying a flashlight around. We had a, a flat tire uh, out <laughs> in Yosemite uh, National Park, and Rob had a flashlight on him. Saved the day. So kudos to you, Rob, for being afraid of the dark and, and overcoming that fear. I think the, the thing I would add and echoing, you can't hide from this. You can't run from this. No different than uh, the cloud and cloud computing. No different than mobile and mobile apps. No different than e-commerce. No, you just go back in time to the personal computer and people going, wow, I'm never going to use a personal computer. That, that we're just gonna, That's just inefficient to fire up a machine to do calculations. And I could just do it right here uh, on my abacus, right? Um, People are always fearful, but the ones who get out in front of this and embrace it and use it intentionally and intelligently are going to be the ones who are, are employed, unfortunately, in the future. I do think it requires larger conversations in society. Um, how, many, how many people feel like Americans or South Koreans work too many hours in a day? How many people have family challenges because they're not home because they're working 12, 15, 18 hour days. These are tools that enable your workforce to work smarter, not harder. And by getting that narrative out and by being able to let people get some more work-life balance, it, it is a start, right? Uh, will jobs get eliminated by this? Yes, because it's no different than you know, note takers would follow people around. You'd have two or three note takers if you're an executive at a company 50 years ago. And now we have Apple Notes or Evernote on your phone and, and you know, Microsoft OneNote is able to take the notes that you might have two or three people, you might have had two or three following you on. It, change and progress is continuous. We have to embrace change and progress as opposed to being fearful of it. Manish, I'm gonna, I'm gonna volley this one over to you. Um, got a question in here that says, uh, how do you combat naysayers? But I'm going to pair that one up with, how do you find internal team members that are advocates that actually know what they're talking about? And maybe instead of just repeating headlines that they see. So how do I combat and how do I identify? What, what are tips or tricks or what are your thoughts? 
You know, the combating and the identifying are really two sides of the same coin. Um, if you think about World War II and the history of dropping leaflets into cities by, just say, the Americans dropping leaflets into France and, and into Germany, and those leaflets were propaganda. And why did they put propaganda into the hands of, of the civilians? They did it to educate them, they did it to communicate with them. And over communicating is not a thing here. You need to over communicate. You need to identify the people who are going to help you amplify your message. And if you amplify your message by having advocates, but if you have people like Rob who are saying, you know, it's it's great that your marketing team is fearful of losing the five creative designers, but what if we made the five creative designers be more efficient so they had more time in a day? And if Rob's going in and helping educate that marketing team to say, here's how we can use generative AI to be better, to do more, what usually happens is it's not that somebody loses their job. It's that you take on 20% more business. You take on 20% more volume and your business grows. So the advocacy is really important. I'll call it propaganda, probably not the right, right word to use here, but being uh, really over, overly communicative and saying, this is good because it's really, really a, a, an important piece here. And um, finding those people that are in your company who also believe that, who are like-minded as an interest and spirit is, is, is a really important part of this. Yeah, that, I have nothing to add. That's awesome. <laughs> so so one of the questions that we got, and we're going to take one, I'm going to answer this last question. Uh, we're going to put the, the final slide here. Um, reach out to us, contact us if you have questions. Uh, we're here to help, right? Our, my whole intent and purpose in life is to make people more comfortable with emerging technology. I think I've rattled that off about a thousand times on, on podcasts and videos at this point. And, and Manish and, and I you know, are, are aligned to, to helping those that are out there. So thank you for coming, obviously, number one. Um, I'm going to take this last quick question, though. If you have another question, feel free to drop it in the chat or just reach out to us directly. That's what we're here for. Also, hit us up on LinkedIn. We do put out a ton of content. It's all valuable and critical and, and important content. So make sure you, you like, follow, and subscribe, right? What are the just, questions? Just a shame, shame, shameless plug here. Rob was just on the Today Show talking about some of this stuff, right? So uh, if you're going to follow anybody on LinkedIn, that is the person to follow, right? Mr. Mr. Celebrity Superstar right here uh, uh, himself. So uh, definitely please connect with us on LinkedIn, follow us, and, and, and uh, happy to share more. Yeah, humble brag. Uh, thank you, Adrian, for the the clapping hands. I appreciate that. So, so one of the questions that we got was around um, great use cases, and then tying this one into how do I create unique content through 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 large language models. I'll take your first step. So, a very good first pass or use case is creating content for your brand or in your personal style, and this aligns directly to how you can ensure your content is unique. And this is just called priming the pump, okay? If you're using ChatGPT, prime the pump, let the, the prompt, the first prompt be, hey, I wanna create content. I'm gonna give you content that I want you to create in this style. This is how I speak. This is our brand voice. This is all the different things that we, I can provide to you. Here's excerpts of my content. Here's different ways that I communicate. Here's my, my speaking or, or, or communication style when it comes to copywriting. Do that. Then your pro tip is to ask. Ask the next prompt to say, what else do you need to make this content amazing? And ChatGPT or the large language model will give you a list of questions that you can answer. And that's a great way to get very, very unique content out of a large language model that is not trained or fine tuned to your point. Okay. So there's your, your very good use case and, and, and cheating large language models to create content that's unique, unique to you. So with that, Manish, anything to wrap us up on anything you want to close out? We're at 49 minutes. We went over time. So um, thank you for hanging in there with us. If you're still in the chat, thank you for the clapping hands. I always appreciate those, but Manish, I'll let you wrap us up. I think the last thing I would say would be to use a real world analogy. Uh, I bought my kids mountain bikes for Christmas. Actually, Santa Claus did, but don't tell them. If you ride for two hours, you're going to fall off. 
you ride for 100 hours, you're going to be doing backflips on a, on a mountain. So what's really important is just start using this stuff, do a little bit, and you'll 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 feel a lot of progress really, really fast, and you'll become an, uh, an educated advocate very, very quickly. So, um, you know, really happy to have had you guys on the, the webinar. We'll be doing more of these as we go and specific topics and uh, really uh, excited about the engagement. And there's a lot of opportunity here to, to really separate yourself. So thank you for being curious. Thank you for, uh, you know, educating yourself and, and uh, being collaborative with us. We really appreciate you. Absolutely. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Look forward to chatting with you soon. Thank <laughs> you.